Hello Mouses! Well today I'm coming down with a cold and I can't take any Lemsip which is my usual way of doing de way of dealing with a cold. So today's uh, so today's video is going to be sponsored by annoying side effects of tablets and feeling like death warmed up. So today I want to talk to you about the Riot Act and why reading the Riot Act is one of those phrases that people seem to use to suggest that if someone doesn't stop doing something bad then they will do something even worse in return. It all comes from this piece of legislation in the 18th century, 1714 to be exact, called the Riot Act as we know it now, but which had such a long name that I'm going to have to read it off the screen in order to get it right. So bear with me a moment. Okay, the Act's long title, which is the one that isn't usually used, because we usually refer to Acts by the summary title that goes at the top of the first page on the legislation. But the long name is An Act for Present. I can't even read today, this is terrible. An Act for Preventing Tumults and Riotous Assemblies and for the More Speedy and Effectual Punishing the Rioters. Which you can tell from that that English has changed somewhat since the 18th century because these days we would have said and effective punishment of the rioters. Somewhat different but meaning essentially the same thing. So what's this legislation about? Well basically it comes from a fear at the time that the new Hanoverian dynasty that of George I would be taken out by the Jacobite rebels uh, who were around and who actually did invade the country twice in the 18th century and they didn't manage to do much but there you go. But it was basically the idea that if a lot of them are gathering together, perhaps we could get a new way of stopping them doing any harm before they did any harm, rather than punishing them afterward, which is not always the best way to go about trying to get rid of a rebellion. Because, let's face it, if you, if you wait for the rebels to shoot everyone that they're wanting to shoot, and then go in and stop them, that's a bit late. So they brought in the Riot Act. And, yeah, that didn't work either. It starts out really well. It gives power to local authorities to, to declare groups of 12 or more people a riotous assembly and to get them to disperse within an hour. So that's really where it starts to break down. They don't have to disperse immediately. They have to disperse within an hour. So you've got 12 people and you basically say, right, you're a riot, go away. And they go, yeah, give us a bit, give us uh, 20 minutes. And that's perfectly allowed. So if they're not spotted before an hour before they want to do something happens, then what happens? So yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go away in a minute. We just want to kill this guy who's coming around in about 45 minutes. There's nothing you can do about it. You still have to wait for them to do the deed and then you can get them. So that's not very good. The other way that this is bad is it required a magistrate and there are only few magistrates in any area because that's how it works. Otherwise it would just be anyone. But it requires a magistrate to read out a paragraph from the Act, loudly enough for these people to hear it. And you can tell from my voice the way that I'm laughing that this is not going to go down well. So you've got to get one guy to come along and in front of a crowd of people who are being riotous, you've got to get him to read out an entire paragraph of densely worded text. Good luck with that. So let's read what he actually had to say. And don't worry, this is not going to cause you to have to leave because the right, the right Act has been superseded now, so this doesn't matter anymore. You have to read out, and I quote, Our Sovereign Lord the King chargeth and commandeth all persons being assembled immediately to disperse themselves and peaceably to depart to their habitations or to their lawful businesses upon the pains contained in the Act made in the first year of King George for preventing tumults and riotous assemblies, God save the King. Good luck getting that out while a bunch of people beat you up. And this, this has been a problem for them in several cases in the 18th, 19th and early 20th centuries. I kid you not, for 300 years there were problems with this act and nothing changed. There were problems where writers would be arrested who would then claim, but he never said it, or he never said it all, or I never heard it said so I didn't leave. What can you do? You can't prove that, that they didn't hear it. So they started putting up signs such as the Riot Act has been read. Just to basically say, 
Right, you've got to go now, and these, here's some science to prove that we've read it. Yeah, that's not going to go down well either, is it? So, speaking as a lawyer here, I would go, Hmm, my lad, you've put up that sign, so what particular reading of the Riot Act does that sign pertain to? Was it this one, or a previous one? And can you still prove, through the putting up of this sign, that the Riot Act was read by this magistrate here to that person over there? Because you can't. That's just a sign. I might as well put up one that says free goats reply here. It has the same sort of meaning. So anyway, the Act lasted for 300 years and we have now the same reading the Riot Act. So how did it last for 300 years? Was it continually used? No. Hardly ever used in fact. It came around in some riots here and there and a lot of people claimed that they never heard it. Although a particular passage wasn't read out properly and things like that. And then it generally went into disuse. And then in 1967, the Criminal Law Act came along and went, hmm, you know that old riot act? We really don't need that anymore. So it got rid of it. And that was it. <laughs> it lasted for 300 years, hardly used, then got rid of because actually people realised that it was a bit crap. And now we have a replacement in the form of the Public Order Act 1986, which does a far better job of dealing with riots. Uh, well, people would argue that as well, I suppose. But that's how law is. It's basically an argument where lots of people put on their nice clothes. And on that note, we'll sum up the Riot Act basically being an old piece of legislation that is now defunct, which we like to make fun of, and which has become more of a turn of phrase than anything else. If you have any questions or comments about it, by all means, leave them in the comments section below. Speaking of comments, thanks very much to Mystery207, who commented on yesterday's video saying that I was hot. And you know what? I am a bit feverish. Well done for noticing. But anyway, on that note, I've been Zoe Robinson, you've been watching the video, and I'll see you tomorrow.